Terence Crawford retains his WBO welterweight world title with a 12th round, excuse me, TKO victory over Jose Benavidez Jr. There was beef going into this fight. If you saw the weigh-in, Terence Crawford actually took a swing <laughs> at Benavidez. Uh, it's not often in boxing that you see a guy take an actual swing. There's usually shoving matches. Sometimes you see a guy take a swing. I mean, the best punch I've seen thrown at a weigh-in for a boxing match was Riddick Bowe when he cracked Larry Donald on the jaw. <laughs> that was a tremendous one too that he hit Larry Donald with. Larry Donald just stood there rock jawed, you know, iron jawed and just took the shots. Uh, bare knuckle shots from Riddick Bowe who was leaning into the shots too. Terence Crawford didn't land with his shot, his right hook that he threw at uh, Benavidez. But as I say, there was a lot of bad blood going into the fight. And whoa, 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 whoa. Terence Crawford's got a 74-inch reach? Is that a legitimate measurement? That's crazy. They used to have his reach measure, <laughs> measured at shorter than that. Now, if that's a legit measurement, then boy, that's a very, very handy asset for Terence Crawford, isn't it? A 74-inch reach. Very long arms. Anyway, let me not get sidetracked here. There was beef before the fight between the two of them. And, you know, Benavidez came out and fought very spirited. Throughout the fight, really, but particularly in the early rounds. Very spirited. He's a tall guy. He was using his jab pretty well. He was competitive with Terence Crawford in the early part of this fight. But as Crawford adjusted and switched to southpaw, because Crawford came out orthodox, eventually switched to southpaw, figured out the angles, figured out the timing, and gradually started to break Benavidez down. Benavidez's pace slowed considerably in the second half of the fight. Terence Crawford was really taking over. His defensive skills were sublime. His attacking skills were fantastic. He was landing combinations I particularly like the right hooks to the body that Terence Crawford was landing on Benavidez from a southpaw stance. Tremendous shots. Left hands down the pipe. Really putting on a clinic. And just as it looked as though the fight was going to go the distance. And look, this wasn't a thrilling fight. It wasn't a classic by any means. But it was an interesting fight. I couldn't help but feel as though the crowd were a little disappointed in the 11th and going into the 12th because they'd wanted to see Terence close the show like he's done so many other times, including against Jeff Horn. And just when you thought the fight was going to go to a points decision, Terence Crawford lands a cracking shot which deposited Benavidez on his back on the canvas quite heavily. The man got up, but Terence Crawford stepped in to finish him against the ropes and the referee rightly waved it off. So, a great performance by Terence Crawford. Many people consider him to be the pound for pound number one. Has he established himself as the number one at welterweight yet? Obviously not, but he's been wanting to. He's been talking about a fight against Errol Spence and unfortunately and rather disappointingly, Errol Spence hasn't been obliging him. I'm really disappointed by that because I'm somebody who from very early on in Errol Spence's career really did believe he was the truth. And I still kind of do believe he's the truth, but hearing him come out with the stuff he's been coming out with with regards to a Terence Crawford fight is just really disappointing. Terence Crawford is that guy. And he's that good. He is. And he wants to test himself against the Errol Spencers of the world or Keith Furman if he can come back. Crawford wants them fights. And we have to give kudos to Terence Crawford for calling out the big names coming up through all these weight divisions, becoming undisputed champion and all that kind of stuff, you know, the weight division below. 34-0, 25 KOs, 31 years old, probably in his prime right now. Very impressive. I've heard people say, several people, say that Terence Crawford reminds them of a fighter from the 80s. And he really does. He's got that 80s vibe about him. The way he moves, even the way he looks, his body type, everything. He looks like a fighter from the 80s. And he's even got a crowd who are like a crowd from the 80s. 
Because normally American boxing crowds are quite subdued compared to British boxing crowds. They don't tend to support their fighters as enthusiastically as British boxing fans do. But Terence Crawford fans are the exception. Terence Crawford fans come out and they pack the arena out every time he fights. They raise the roof cheering for him. And that's great to see that he has that kind of support. So big up Terence Crawford's fans, by the way. The guys who actually go and watch his fights and pack out those arenas and cheer for him and put on a great atmosphere. A great atmosphere not only for the people there in attendance, but also people like myself watching. It's great to see an atmosphere like that at a boxing match. And it is like a throwback to the 80s. You know, the atmospheres you used to get at Sugar Ray Leonard fights. It's reminiscent of that with Terence Crawford. I mean, maybe not at that level yet, but getting there, you know? So very impressed with his performance, very impressed with his ability. What more else is there to say about the guy? Pound for pound number one. Look, I'm not into pound for pound lists, but if I had to pick somebody to be at the top of my pound for pound list, Terence Crawford would definitely be somebody I consider. 100%. Year in, year out, he's putting in quality performances. And as I say, he's probably peaking right now. So we must enjoy him while he's active and while he's around, while he's at his best, and just hope and pray to the likes of an Errol Spence, Keith Furman, Sean Porter, step in the ring and face the guy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.